In this short video, I want to take on a charting technique, chart building technique called bars and candlesticks. This is basically saying, as someone who reads charts, you want as much useful information about a stock, a sector or an index as you can possibly get. And bars and candlesticks are a way of doing that. So what are we doing here? Charts are a way for investors to get an insight into whether a security is trending up, down or sideways. Charting, remember, is all about not looking at fundamentals. It's about a top-down approach, looking at stock price action and trying to decide what will happen next on the basis of what you've just seen. Uh, the more information you get out of a chart, the better, obviously. The more you can get in one snapshot, the better. There are several ways you can build a chart. And candlesticks, a Japanese technique, originally centuries-old Japanese technique, are currently probably the most popular way to build um, charts that people use to predict trends and take uh, decisions about whether to buy, hold or sell. So, with no more ado, um, one option is a simple chart line. You literally plot a share price over time and that tells you a certain amount of information. It tells you that the share price is quite volatile. It gives you some idea about where it started, some idea about where it finished, the peak, okay, the subsequent trough and so on. But for a chartist, they would say, well, there's, you know, there's only so much information I can get from that. So why don't we take it a step on? Now, in this introduction, uh, another option is a bar chart. And a bar chart does add a bit of extra data. Because what a bar chart does, and there's a clue in the name, is it adds bars in at each data point. So this is the same graph as you had before. You might recognize the black line there, but I've added a few things, okay? I have linked together the closing prices for each day. That's how I got the previous chart up. All right, so they're all still there. The previous chart was based on closing prices for each day. But what we've managed to add in is a bit of extra data here. These, these bars represent, if I pick one of them, the top of the bar represents the high and the bottom of the bar in each case represents the low within that trading session. And I've defined a trading session as a day. Now, why is that useful? So it's the highest price achieved in that day and the lowest price achieved in that day. Because don't forget, the stock will be moving up and down during the day. And basically, the closing price is just one price. So this is telling me some information about how representative was that closing price of what actually happened during the day. In other words, how volatile was the price over the day? And in this introduction, I just want to say that the longer the bar, the more volatile the stock was in that particular session. So day six we've got quite a lot of volatility because you can see the low and the high are quite a long way away from the close. All right, so it gives you an idea of you know, how much movement there was over the course of the day and also where the closing price ended up in relation to where trading moved the price, buyers and sellers interacting over the course of the day. So as bars expand, you've got you know, rising volatility, let alone what's happening to the closing price, and as they contract, you've got falling volatility. And you imagine that's quite a useful picture. It's one snapshot, it's an extra piece of information you can put on the same chart, okay, to help you to understand what's happening. And ultimately, if this is a 10-day chart you're looking at, to ask the question, you know, what's gonna happen next? I mean, at the end of the day, that's what charting is all about. What's gonna happen next? What happens on day 11? Can I pick anything out from days one to 10 that gives me some clues there? All right. And if I'm looking for a pattern, how strong is that pattern? More about those in future videos. Now, bar charts are quite useful, but candlesticks are even more useful. Candlestick charts, few key facts here, they're centuries old. Japanese traders twigged quite early on that prices for things, and especially securities that trade in a massive liquid market, are driven as much by emotion as by rationality. After all, human beings are quite emotional at the end of the day. In other words, an asset's true value and its actual price can vary because the price is driven as much about what people feel as what they kind of think, if that makes sense. So what they came up with was this idea of a candle, and you'll see it's pretty obvious why it's called that in a moment. It has a body and it has wicks that often stick out the top and the bottom. And the idea is that this gives you data about closing prices, opening prices, and also session highs and lows all in one place. And from there, you can do quite sophisticated interpretation of what might be happening to the stock and try to work out what might happen next. And I'll give you a few ideas in this basic video next. So, 
what have we got? A basic candlestick might look something like that. It has um, a body, all right, and it has an upper and a lower shadow, as the top and the bottom are called. But what's it actually saying? What's it actually saying? Well, this one, um, I've scribbled in, but this one basically you'd interpret like this. There is the low price for the session you're looking at. And when, when it's on a chart, it'll make more sense. But you've got the lowest price in the particular session. So if you're looking at a day, it's the lowest price for the stock that day. And that could have been any time of day. All right. You've got the high at the top. That's the, the, the sort of top wick and the bottom wick, if you want to see it that way, often called shadows. In the middle, there's a box. And this, basically, is the opening and closing prices compared. You've got the opening and the closing prices also shown on the candle. All right, and the fact that, I know I scribbled it in, but the fact it's white or clear gives you another piece of information. If it's a clear candle, usually, I know I've scribbled it in, but if you ignore my red there, if it's a clear candle, basically what that tells you is that the opening price for the session was below the closing price which is bullish. In other words, the stock moved up in that session. If you get um, the middle bit uh, blocked in, quite often in black or maybe in red, for example, it means that the reverse was true. So the closing price was below the opening price of the day, which is quite possible, which means the stock fell. All right? And the gap between the high and the low gives you some feel, scribbling away here, for volatility. If they're quite near the box, then the share price didn't move around much on that particular trading session. And one candle normally represents one session, a day, for example. Whereas if they're miles apart, then you had quite a lot of volatility within the particular session. Now, this is quite useful because you know, you'll see candles where the box is quite near the top or the box is quite near the bottom. And as we'll see in future videos, that can give you quite a good feel for what sort of price action you had during the day. So for example, was it, a, was it a day dominated by buyers where sellers came in right at the end? Or was it a day dominated by sellers where buyers came in right at the end? And people who look for reversals in patterns use candles in that manner. So more about that coming up when we do more advanced candlestick stuff in future videos. What would that look like on a chart then? That's one session. Well, it could look something like this. Okay, so you'll see what I mean there. Here come some candlesticks for 10 days worth of trading. All right, and just to give you a flavor here, you can see that, for example, um, what, what people might call, there's, there's one, there's another. All right, those are almost spinning tops, as they're called, just to give you a bit of jargon. That's where you've got a relatively condensed price action in that trading session, the high and the low quite tight around the opening and closing price. But also you can see from this chart, uh, the opposite, by the way, is here. we have got much bigger boxes and you've got much longer wicks. That one in particular stands out. It's white, which tells you that strongly bullish day. It means that the opening price was quite a long way below the closing price. And there was quite a lot of volatility because you've got a big distance between the high for that day and the low for that day. So quite a lot going on on day six. Day four is kind of the other way around. All right, that's a day where prices fell overall. The opening price was above the closing price. Okay, and quite strongly so, because the box is quite wide, and so on. And basically what these candlesticks enable you to do is to start to interpret opening versus closing price, what during the session, the strength of bullish and bearish sentiment, sen sentiment sorry, and also start to identify patterns and the strength of those patterns. More about that in future videos. So, lots of information conveyed via this thing called the candlestick chart. Now, cut three, two or three pieces of jargon, there's loads, and we will cover this more in, in other videos. A long white, you saw one of those, that's where a close is well above the open, that's pretty bullish. A long black, that's the box in the middle, where the close is well below the open, that's, that's bearish. All right, and these things can be supported by other indicators. And a spinning top, a tight trading range is kind of neutral, so there's some very basic bull, bear, neutral terminology. And charting does come with its whole own language. Now, just a word about openings and close, all right? Um, the opening price for a daily trading session is not the same as the previous day's 
closing price. And that's just worth bearing in mind when you look at charts. Some people think, well, hang on a minute, um, surely every day last night's closing price is today's opening price. So why am I not seeing that on any of these charts? And the answer is it isn't. Just because the London Stock Exchange, for example, is open 8 to 4.30, doesn't mean around the world Vodafone shares can't be traded at any time of day or night, in theory. So just keep that in mind. It's an important principle of charting that opening and closing prices do not have to match. Yesterday's closing price is not today's opening price, and so on. All right, London Stock Exchange is the one we'll look at most of the time in these videos, open 8 to 4.30. But because trading can happen outside of those hours, when you get to 8 o'clock in the morning and the market opens, basically the price can have moved overnight. And you'll see that whichever style of chart we look at. So there you have it. Bars and candlesticks, a way of conveying a bit more information than a basic chart will ever give you.